So, she claimed that I did voodoo to her. She said I was doing voodoo on her, right? A friend of mine's, when we was going through our problems, introduced us to someone that was supposed to be a spiritual man, right? Me and Kirby both decided that we wanted this man to help us through our problems. And, you know, he, he was a spiritual man and he could pray over us and do whatever he had to do to make sure that we was okay. This man was a Haitian man. We both decided that this is what we was, wanted to do. The man did a spiritual reading. And the man said that the same guy that has been doing, that has been threatening her, put out her sex tape and all that, has been doing voodoo on her. That's what the man told us. I'm not, I'm not assuming anything. I'm not making any allegations. I'm, I'm telling you the facts. The man said that the guy who she was with was doing voodoo on her to keep her in his life. The man asked Kirby, did you ever give this man any piece of clothing that you wore or anything? She said, yes. She said he asked for her shirt when she was in the academy and, and he took a dirty panty and, 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 and had that. And the man was doing voodoo on her. So I, so we went for it to be, to be removed. We didn't go to a black magic specialist or a dark voodoo person. We went to somebody that said they were godly and they could help us take that off. The man, when me and Kirby had another situation where she left, the man said that he's been calling Kirby and she's not answering his phone and he takes that as disrespect and he doesn't like that. He told me that what he was going to do to her and this and that and I didn't like the fact that that's where he was going with it because if you're a man of God, you shouldn't have that type of thought process in your mind. And this is where I realized that this man was a dirty man. He, he told me what he wanted me to do to Kirby and I wrote it down on a piece of paper, and I knew that I was never gonna talk to this man again. I knew that I was never gonna do what he told me to do to Kirby, so I left it alone. But I left that paper that I wrote everything down in my drawer. Once again, Kirby had the need, when I was not home, to search through my things, and she found it. And I've been, I was honest and I was open with her, and I told her, I said, listen, this is what the man told me to do, but I would never do anything like that to you. Because I love you genuinely. So when she talk about voodoo, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to read the other texts that I couldn't bother to scroll down and all of that stuff. But I also want to show you the amount of interference that her mother had to play in our relationship. Okay? I want you to see the fight that we had to fight through from day one. Okay? Because everybody else had a, a ulterior motive for our relationship. Everybody else had a say about what they wanted and how they wanted it in our relationship. When I posted, when the, the first time I posted First time, the first time I posted Kirby, this is what appeared in my DM. And I'm about to wrap it up. I don't want to be on here all day, so I, I'm about to wrap it up. But I'm just playing. Okay. As a matter of fact, you, you know what? It's not even important. It's not even important. So, I have the sex tapes of her and the same dude that was planning to leak it. 
I got all kind of sexual things in Kirby, from Kirby's phone. Why leak that one? How you know it wasn't that guy that leaked it? The guy that was rejoicing and laughing and 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 and, and, and clowning her out in a in a restaurant bathroom. How we don't know that it wasn't him? How we don't know it was her? When she came out and did her live, I sat in the house and I was in disbelief that the same person that was mad at me telling my truth last year could somehow find it in her heart this year to try to lie and ridicule me. How we don't know. I was sitting in my house when this whole thing happened. I had people in my house. They was comforting me. They was telling me, don't worry about it. You're going to get through it. I, w I go to sleep. I wake up. And the next morning, a sex tape is out. And it's supposed to be me. What do I look like? What do I look like? Releasing Kirby's sex tape to the public. When I, I still love this girl up to today. And I'm not ashamed to say it because love is real. I still have love for Kirby today. You understand me? You understand? So, so, so I have no reason for that. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna read these things, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on with my life. Like I said, I appreciate everybody who's watching, and giving me your time for me to speak what I had to speak. And I'm just gonna give you a quick situation. Last year, we went to St. Kitts. To the people who follows me, they understand and they know what I'm talking about. We all went to St. Kitts. That was when we all had on the Adidas track pants with the Nikes and everybody was bunning us out and saying, you can't wear Adidas with Nikes and all of that. We went to St. Kitts because Kirby, after three months of doing house chores and taking care of the kids, she felt like she needed a break. Well, I was going to work, but I said, you know what? If she's tired, we can... I usually leave from Thursday to Sunday. I'm gonna book it from Monday to whatever and spend the week and we will have a good time and we will go back home. So even though I was dealing with spending extra money by bringing them and all of that stuff and all of that, I still wanted her to be happy. We got to St. Kitts. We had a good time the first night the first night, we drove through St. Kitts, we saw all the monkeys and all of this stuff, and, you know, we went home, and she took a shower, I laid in the bed, she came back out of the bathroom with some Victoria's Secret panties, and I don't think, I don't believe she had a top on, but, um, the panties that she had on was like it was knitted, like it was a crochet panty or whatever, and... She came on top of me and she got on top of me and um, she asked me, do I like her panties? I said, no, take them off. I love you for who you are. Nothing that you put on is going to make me more attracted to her. To please, nobody call me. Please, let me just do what I got to do, please. I'm, I'm about to wrap it. Right, so I went. To, we, we, so she's on top of me, and she's like, "She said you really don't like my panties." I said, "Listen, it's not about your panties. I love you. I like you. For, you turned me on. Not not panties." She got upset, and she went in the bathroom, and she sat in the bathroom. I walked in the bathroom. I asked her. I said, "What's the matter?" She said, "She's trying to make an effort to spice things up or make things thing and and um." I didn't appreciate it. I said, it's not that, not that I don't appreciate it. I'm trying to let you know that you don't need to enhance anything. I love you the way you are. You are beautiful the way you are. You are sexy the way you are. She started arguing with me. Now, 
if anybody knows Kirby, an argument will definitely turn into a fight because she likes to hit people. She likes to, she likes to disrespect people. That's her thing. So I seen that it was getting heated and I went out the room and I went into the living room and I laid down. When I laid down, she followed me out there and she was like, I'm sorry, just come to bed. And I said, no, I don't want to come to bed because I realize what's going on. I, I, I don't want to fight. And she's telling me, you better come to bed now. You better come to bed now. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that she's getting more and more aggressive. So I put the cover over my head and I'm just ignoring her. That's when I felt, boom, she punched me in, on the side of my face. I got up, I tried to restrain her and she's just swinging at me, swinging, swinging, swinging. After that, the kids got up, she went in the room, she started packing a suitcase. She said, I'm no good and I'm always starting stuff and I'm gonna leave and she tried to leave and all me and all the kids sat down by the pool with her and I told her, I said, listen, let's put that behind us. Let's put that behind us. Let's not mess up this family vacation for that, that we put together and for, and for the kids. And we all convinced her to stay and she stayed. That's one incident. This is a text that I sent her because she was saying to me that I forced her to leave her job, never. Wasn't it you? Wasn't it you that was avoiding to go in your apartment because your son's father was there? Didn't you get engaged while you had a whole nigga in your apartment? You saying that I needed a nanny. Just remember, I held it down for years, doing what I've been doing and still doing it after you left. Never skipped a beat. And I paid a babysitter whenever I needed to go to work. No love was when you spit in my face and fought me. When you hit me in my face in St. Kitts. When you kept threatening me that you was going to move out. Love is when we sat downstairs and you, and when, when you sat downstairs and let the bitch kiss you and suck your titties in my house. You let some random chick touch your ass twice in front of me and told me that she would take you from me. But she didn't have to because you were never mine. So this is the things that I had to deal with. And it's right here. And I could post everything in my story so that y'all can have y'all time with it and read it and do whatever you have to do. I'm not a woman beater. And I've never thought about being a woman beater. Whatever uh, and wherever she got her pictures from, that's okay. That's okay. But don't try to manipulate people to thinking that I was beating you up let alone for years, okay? I was driving on the highway. She called me a bitch ass nigga. She wanna fight, she told me she wanted to fight. I'm ready, what's up? I said, I'm not gonna fight you, Kirby. She said, I know. All you gonna do is cry like a bitch like you always do. Then she said to me, I will run this fucking car off the road. I said, Kirby, do not touch the steering wheel. Three minutes later, she tried to run us off the road. She pulled the steering wheel, dragged it, and tried to drag it into a car and drag it into the wall. I stopped the car, I, I removed her hand. It was a tussle. I removed her hand. And, and when I say tussle, I mean like trying to get her hand off of the steering wheel. I removed her hand and I pulled over. I said, Kirby, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? You trying to kill us? We got back in the car. She told me that she was going to run the car off the road so that I can crash the car and get a DUI and go to jail. I started driving again. She grabbed it again. She grabbed it again and then punched me in my face. Repeatedly punched me in my face. And I got pictures of that also. But like I said today, I'm just going to speak my truth and I'm not responding to anything. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to move on with my life. Okay? Started beating on me while I'm driving and I'm trying to defend myself. Okay? So, the abuser is trying to act like they are the ones that has been abused. If she really want to be honest with y'all, if she really wants to be honest with y'all, tell her to open her notepad in her phone. Don't delete it now. Be honest with the people. Look in her notes and see what her notes say. She has a note that she wrote to herself that says, stop following Nigel around. Keep your hands to yourself. Control your anger. You see, she wiped this phone. She called AT&T and she had to wipe it immediately because she didn't want me to have as much proof as I have. But it's all good. Because God, <laughs> you can't, you can wipe this phone, but you can't wipe God. God know everything that was going on and God knows everything. And like I said, I'm, again, I want to, I want to stress this. The women that has been through physical, verbal, emotional abuse, I am truly, humbly sorry for you. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I apologize for this situation to even bring back memories of what you've been through. I, this is a real situation. I'm empathetic. I have compassion. And that's how I was raised. That's how I was raised. Anybody who's met major hype out of the time that I, I became who I am can never tell you nothing wrong about me. They might say he played too much, he this, he that, but you would never hear that. You would never hear that. Never. And usually when situations like this happen, there's multiple people that come out. People who molest people, they didn't do it once. People who, 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 who are abusers, they didn't do it once. People who rape, they haven't done it once. So I just started today, just started this year. Let the truth be free and your conscience be clear. And I'm not going to respond anymore about anything. As a police officer, if you sat in a relationship for two years and know that you was being abused, you did a disservice. That oath that you took, you did a disservice. No, no legal actions, no nothing. Just on Instagram thanking people for the support. What was your real motive? Was it to get followers? What was your real motive? Because if you were healing, you would take the necessary actions to heal. And let me tell you something. Instagram and, and social media is not the place to heal. Counseling, therapy, that is healing. And that's what I need. After being ridiculed about being molested, after, after, after being beat, after being disrespected, spat on, you threw my clothes out of my own house. 
that I pay mortgage for. Okay? That's what it, the truth is. So you guys that's out there that sees my life as an entertainment, this is not love and hip hop. This is two people that is hurt, that needs healing and needs honesty and needs somewhere for, for comfort. Because neither one of you are going to be affected by what's going on between me and Kirby right now. Everybody else is going to, after this, they're going to go and see what her reply is. They, then you're going to laugh and joke and, and this and that. But understand that it's two people that was ripped apart. Two people that was ripped apart. Two families that was ripped apart. Children that was involved. Where is your self-dignity and your self-respect? My son is going through it right now. My son is going through it right now. Okay? My son came to me and told me that he was being abused by this young lady. He was being talked to and, 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 and threatened by this young lady. He came in my room last night and cried. Okay? So when you decide to ridicule and joke and, and all of this type of stuff, know that there's people that's being affected by this. Okay? Know that. Know that. The night that my clothes was thrown out on the lawn out of my own house that I work hard for and, and, and liquor was being thrown at me, while doing it, I had to threaten to call the police for her to stop. I literally took my phone and act like I was calling 911 for this girl to stop doing what she was doing and stop trying to instigate a fight. Okay? So when the abused person is being thrown and, and flung to the side... To, 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 you, 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 you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You're trying to mask and hide your own problem and throw it on someone else. But it's time to get help. It's time for you to, to get anger classes or whatever you need to do to fix your issues. You need real people in your corner. That's going to admit to you what, what is wrong and what's not the truth. You can't hide behind it forever. Your, your, your baby father beat you and abused you and, 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 and all his sex. And, and, and he, when you didn't want to give him sex, he beat you up. The guy wanted to expose your sex tape. You bringing all of that back on me. Why? When all I did was love you. When all I did was take care of you, try to show you things that you haven't seen before, take you on trips that you haven't. We was in Barbados riding horses last year, December the 8th, which is so ironic because we around the same time. And this is the time that you was telling people that you want to meet, you want to see them and you want them to put their finger in your butt and all this kind of craziness. Where's your dignity, your self-respect? Where is it? If you didn't want to have a family, you could have said so. But you abused me verbally, physically. You made me feel like I was nothing. You threw things in my face that I confided in you about. So you could go ahead and put up your pictures and try to fabricate stories and make it look like I was abusing you. But God ain't sleeping. God is not sleeping. Believe me when I tell you that. And I'm going to close off in that. I'm not even going to go into all of the other texts that I have because I don't think that it's, it's necessary. I really don't think it's necessary. But what I am going to do is I'm going to read this scripture. And I hope that y'all have a blessed day. And like I said, this is it. I'm not answering anything. And you can make your speculations, your judgment, you can do whatever you want to do. But this, this is my protection. 
God is my protection. Okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I appreciate y'all time. Y'all stay blessed. God bless you. And I just had to tell my truth. And like I said, this is it for me. This is this is where I, this is where it stops. I wish Kirby all the best with her life and her future. And I, like I said, I still love that girl up to, to this day. Because that's what real love is. Real love wouldn't allow me to come out here and, and talk or, or and, and bash her and disrespect her. I would never do that. Her son lived in my house for two years. In and out, in and out. I had a bond with him. And like I said, no disrespect to anybody who had anything to do with this. But I had to tell my truth. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you and God bless.